Hello, my name is Alexandra Graney and I'm the Cellular Pathology Manager at University Hospitals Dorset. Histopathology is the diagnosis and study of diseases of the tissues and involves examining tissues and or cells under the microscope. Histopathologists provide a diagnostic service for cancer. They process the cells and tissues removed from suspicious lumps and bumps, identify the nature of the abnormality and, if malignant, provide information to the clinician about the type of cancer, its grade and, for some cancers, its responsiveness to certain treatments. Most people know what a biopsy is, but who makes the diagnosis and how? The answer lies behind the scenes, and this short video takes you on a trip around histology, which is part of the Cellular Pathology Department at University Hospitals Dorset. Here you'll see the pathologists, scientists and support staff who work in the lab and contribute to making a diagnosis. So what happens after your surgeon has sent off your biopsy sample to the laboratory? When the biopsy arrives in the laboratory, the biopsy samples are checked in and prioritised according to the clinical need. I'm just booking in a specimen that's received into the lab and then it goes off to be um, dissected by BMS and I'm just checking for accuracy as well. The first stage is known as fixation. Before tissue processing can begin, the samples must be adequately fixed in a chemical known as formalin, which preserves the natural tissue structure in a lifelike state to prevent degradation. The next stage is known as dissection. The laboratory receives a wide range of tissue specimens which range from large complex resections, excisions and smaller less complex biopsies. Representative samples of the tissue are placed into uniquely labelled cassettes for processing. The next stage is called processing. Once the tissue has been dissected, the cassettes are placed in an automated processor. I'm processing the specimens overnight on our processor to remove all the water from the tissue and infuse it with paraffin wax. The next stage is known as embedding. This stage, once the tissue has been processed, it is transferred to a mould and molten paraffin wax is added and left to cool. The tissue has now been stabilised for the next stage of the process. After the blocks been processed overnight in the processor, uh, they need to be embedded into paraffin wax uh, for them to for the tissues to be get ready for cutting. So what we do is we get the tissue and we got molds. You need to get the right size for the right tissue. You put wax in it and you place the tissue into the wax. And this is a cold plate, so the uh, wax settles and you can press the tissue down to make sure it is full face for the microtome and you put the unique cassette with the unique number onto the tissue and put more wax in it and it's got unique uh, colored beads for every uh, person put more wax and you put it this is a cold plate as well you put it onto the cold to get the um, wax cold and get it ready for cutting in the microtome. So we get the cassette out and so it's ready to be cut in the microtome. The next stage is known as microtomy. So I've received the specimen from the embedding room and now I'm going to cut a four micron thick ribbon, float it on the water bath and pick it up on the slide. The wax block contains the tissue sample and is cut into very thin slices called sections on an instrument called a microtome. The tissue section inside the ribbon of wax is floated out onto a water bath which allows any creases due to compression to disperse. The section is then picked up onto a glass microscope slide for air drying. The next stage of the process is known as staining. Once the tissue is on the glass slide, the wax supporting the tissue can be removed and the tissues can be stained using dyes so that we can visualise the cells and tissue structures under a light microscope. So these are the slides that have just been cut on the microtome. Um, I'm going to put them on this machine where it will stain it with haematoxylin and eosin, which is the basic stain that shows tissue morphology, such as the nuclei and cytoplasm. 
staining cell structures, including the cytoplasm and nucleus, is often sufficient to allow a disease diagnosis based on the organisation or disorganisation of the cells, and also shows any abnormalities or particular indicators in the actual cells, such as nuclear changes typically seen in cancer. Immunohistochemistry is used to detect the presence of specific protein markers that can assist with accurate cancer diagnosis and classification. Some specimens re require an additional staining, such as immunohistochemistry after the H&E. So this room is our immunohistochemistry room. Here we use antibodies that will bind with antigens. Uh, which after the staining we are able to look at them under the microscope. Sometimes slides do also require other stains other than just H&Es. For example at the moment I'm just going to be do it starting a reticulin stain. Uh, so like we use this to find various stains which can occur in cancers in like bone marrows and such. So what I'm going to be starting with is I'm going to be covering the uh, sections with acetified potassium permanganate. Uh, this and uh, this is part of the process which will make, make it easier so that we can uh, figure out what is wrong with the patient of diagnosis and such. So after the staining we have to do a quality check. Every hour we check the slides to make sure that the haemotoxin and eosin staining is all of higher quality. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to check it under the microscope. So once the sections have been stained, we check the slide against the block to make sure that the tissue on the slide is a representative section of what's in the block, and then all the slides can be put together and given to the consultants for reporting. I am a histopathologist at UHD. My name is uh, Adel Mohaisen, and I'm reporting one colonic polyp. Working in histology is like a detective role. The time taken to report a single case may vary from a few minutes to several hours, depending on the nature of the specimen and how many slides are produced. Consultant histopathologists also attend MDTs, which are known as multidisciplinary team meetings, so their findings can be discussed with their colleagues in radiology, oncology and surgery. Histology is an extremely important speciality which supports a huge range of patients through their patient journey. Many of the patients will have biopsies and operations where tissue is removed and histopathology consultants, biomedical scientists, medical laboratory staff and secretarial staff all play an important role in ensuring treatment plans are tailored to each and individual patient in a timely manner.